Ooh, this red is super pretty. Woo, look at that, it's so bright. Let's see if it makes purple, y'all. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Rosalie Hazlett and I'm an artist and illustrator and this is Art Supply Showdown. I'm a nature illustrator and artist, and I use watercolor for pretty much all of the work that I do. And I just really enjoy it because it allows me to quickly add a lot of color to my drawings. And also I like it because I can take it with me hiking. It's very portable, compact, and it's also very easy to clean up. Every watercolor set is unique, just like your needs as a painter. So in this video, we'll be testing three different kits to determine which set is best for you. The three watercolor sets that we'll be testing today are the Angora set, which is about $12.99, a handmade watercolor set by Greystone Arts, which is about $70, and a Schmincke travel set, which is $130. To get started, I'm going to be doing some basic brush work with each of the sets. And the things that I'm really going to be looking for are vibrancy, layering, blending, and lift. I'm going to be looking at those four characteristics because I mostly use a wet on dry watercolor technique with my work, which really requires lots of layering, lots of vibrancy, and adding tons of detail. And then after that, I'm actually going to be taking you through my entire painting process with each different set. And today I'll be painting three natural found objects that I collected on our farm. And I'm really excited about this process because I have never painted with any of these kits before. So this will be all new information for me. All right, so let's start testing out these different sets. I'm going to be putting down some basic brush strokes to check out the different qualities that each set offers. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the Angora watercolor set. And I'm gonna start by just doing a simple, quick color swatch palette over here um, to test out the vibrancy of these paints. I kind of expected that it would maybe not be as vibrant as the others. So far, it's looking to be pretty vibrant just with one stroke, so I'm a little surprised by that. Okay, so those are the colors that we're working with, and it's looking, it's looking pretty decent so far, actually. I'm a little bit surprised by how bright they are just with one stroke. So let's take a look at how these layer. I'm going to first take this blue color, and I'm gonna fill up this whole little section with just one layer and then I'll let it dry. And once that's dry, I'll add a second layer and then a second and third layer to these sections. And we'll see how quickly it builds up the, the vibrancy of the, the layers. One of the really unique qualities of watercolor and one of the qualities that I love about it is you can create these super smooth, watery gradients between two colors. So for the blending section, I'm gonna test to see how two different colors merge together. And if they create a nice seamless transition, that's something that I'm looking for. I'm gonna put them right next to each other to start and then I'll put a little water in between them to see how they kind of merge together. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So yeah, I think it's doing kind of what I expected it to do. I don't see anything that's wrong with the way that this is blending. Um, yeah, so I think it passed that test. And then lift refers to how easily the paint comes up from the paper. So even though you can't erase mistakes with watercolor, and that's what stresses a lot of people out about it, you can lift up the pigment from the page by adding a little bit of water over top of your mistake or if you have an area where you accidentally made it way too dark you can put a little water on top and then lift it up with your paper towel and i've noticed in the past that some more expensive paints don't have quite as much lift so that's kind of one of those things that it's like maybe the more expensive paint isn't better for you because you like to be able to correct your mistakes as you go and this is like almost coming up completely which kind of means that it's probably not quite as pigmented. So it might not be as light fast. It might not stay um, a bold color for years into the future. If you're making like a fine art piece, it might fade a bit. 
but it's really great when you're learning watercolors because you can correct mistakes and everyone likes to have the ability to do that. So now that the first layer is completely dry to the touch, I'm going to add a second and third layer. So you can see that the um, opacity of each color increases in each layer and that's what we're looking for. I think that it's doing a pretty good job um, and I think probably if I continued to add more layers it would continue to get bolder and bolder. For the blending test, I at first I thought that I liked the way they were blending together but as I'm looking at it now that it's dry I feel like it's not a super smooth transition between the green and the blue so I'm curious to see how the other ones perform. All right, so moving on to the Greystone art set. Super stoked about this because I've tried two different handmade watercolor paint brands before, but I've never tried this one. And as soon as I opened this, I noticed just how beautiful these colors are. This is totally my aesthetic, so I'm very excited about this. That's a little bit weaker than I expected. Ooh, this red is super pretty. There's a lot of vibrancy there and it, it just looks kind of like an earthy, like berry red. It looks uh, vibrant, but still really natural, which I really like. All right, so there is the palette for the Greystone Arts set. And when I squint my eyes, I don't even see the green. So I think I am curious about how that layers. So I'm gonna use this green color to create these three layers and we'll see how this builds up because that's the one that I'm most curious about. And I think another thing that I'm noticing is this paint, it's helpful to wet a little bit before you start working with it. Um, and that's the case with some paints. You, you can put a little dot of water on top of each pan, let it sit for a few seconds, and then you start working with it. I think if I had done that up here, it would have been more vibrant. Okay, and now while this dries, I'm gonna head down here and try to blend two colors together. And yep, they created a nice little orange color. It's looking pretty good, but what I learned with this test is that I need to give it a few seconds to really see how well it blends together. Oh wow, this is really lifting up. So now that the first layer of this green color is dry, I'm going to go ahead and add the second and third layers. I think the key here really was to activate the paint with a little bit of water. This is the exact same color as this one and it just needed a few seconds to activate. So that's just an interesting characteristic of this paint. For the blending test, I'm looking at the way that these two colors blended and it's just so smooth. And I think that means that it's gonna be really successful in creating super beautiful gradients. So now that we've tested the Angora and Greystone Arts paint sets. I'm super excited to test the Schmincke Horridum travel set because it's way more expensive than the other two, so I'm curious what it offers that the others don't. So I'm going to go ahead and test the vibrancy by making a little swatch of each of the colors that I see here, and let's see how this goes. Okay, so I am noticing that there is so much vibrancy here. I'm really liking the way all of these pair together. Overall, I feel like I could create so many different colors with these super vibrant colors. Woo, look at that, it's so bright. That's pretty cool. For the blending exercise, I'm going to blend this blue color with this red color. Let's see if it makes purple, y'all. Yup, it's making a nice purple. And then for lift, I'm gonna pick this dark brown color. Now my expectation is that because this is a more pigmented set, uh, it won't lift up quite so easily, but we'll find out. I do think that this stained a little bit more than the others, but it still comes up pretty easily. So now this section is almost dry, so I'm gonna add the second layer. I'm gonna go ahead and add a third layer in this last box. That's pretty nice, yeah. So now that we've tested these four main characteristics of each of these three sets, I'm going to do some real world application and paint three separate complete pieces using each of the three sets. 
For our subject matter, we're going to be painting three natural objects that I found right outside of my studio here earlier in the day. So I found a pine cone, I found a piece of bark that had a really awesome lichen and moss growing on it, and then I found a really nice reddish brown maple leaf. As a fun twist, I'm not going to reveal which set was used to create each painting until the very end. In the previous test that we just did, we learned about the consistency of the paints and kind of how they look when they're taken directly from the pan. But with this test, I'm gonna be able to see how each set works for my unique style. So because I like wet on dry watercolors, I'm gonna see how these sets perform with my style. Okay, so for the first painting, I used the Greystone Arts Palette. For the second painting, I used the Angora Watercolor Palette. And last but not least, for the third painting, I used the Schmincke Travel Set. So as I was painting the pine cone with the Greystone Arts Palette, I noticed that there were a lot of nice vibrant colors. I especially really liked these dark shades. I felt like the red was super rich and this like dark gray color was super nice. In the initial test, I was a little bit worried that maybe the colors wouldn't be as vibrant as I hoped for, but that was because I hadn't yet activated the color by adding water and letting it sit for a few seconds. So now I know going forward with this palette, I do need to activate the colors before I get started. This paint palette allowed me to achieve all of the layers that I wanted to. I didn't feel like the colors were, as soon as they dried, just kind of fading back into the previous layer. I felt like each layer held its own and I was able to get some really nice greens and reds and yeah, it was just really easy to make colors pop with this one. So my experience with Angora was surprisingly delightful. I expected to not like it, I'm gonna be honest. I saw it and it kind of looked like the kids Crayola sets that I had when I was little. And even when I was like five playing with watercolors and I had those sets, I remember being very frustrated because they didn't do what I wanted them to do. So that's kind of what I was expecting with this set. But I was proven wrong because I, honestly forgot that I was using the cheaper set as I was working on this and it just felt like any other watercolors that I use that I enjoy. So I was pleasantly surprised by this. One major drawback for me was that I think there was a lot of blending that was kind of nice, like there are some nice variations in color that I was going for, but the colors were absorbed into one another in a way that makes them look a little bit duller. So that's something that I will note going forward if I decide to use this kit again. And then with the Schmincke palette, I overall really enjoyed this experience. I felt like I was able to get all of the beautiful greens and blues that I was looking for and I could really tell that there was a lot of extra pigment in there because I could see the color blooming into the cup as I was washing the brush off. And with the Angora set, whenever I would rinse my brush out, I noticed that there wasn't a lot of color that was filling up my water cup. So that kind of made me think maybe there's less pigment in this one than in this one and in also in the Greystone Art set. With the Schmincke set, it blended so well. So I was trying to create some soft gradients between yellow and green and blue, and the colors were just coming together so beautifully. And that's something that I noticed in our initial test with the Schmincke. It definitely took the award for best blender. Um, so I was pleased to be able to use that in this like hands-on application and see that it, it definitely was performing really well in that category. One thing that was confusing to me, they have two blues in the same set and with only eight colors, it seems like maybe a different color would have been nice to throw in there to give me more variety, but that's not a huge drawback for me because I use a lot of blue. So as you're trying to decide which paint palette to choose, I'd suggest for 
absolute beginners, you just kind of want to get your feet wet with watercolor, you don't know if you'll like it, you don't want to commit and feel like, oh no, I spent so much money, now I have to like this new hobby, I'd suggest getting a cheap paint palette like this Angora set. With this one, I was able to achieve pretty much all of the results that I was looking for with a paint palette that cost me $12.99, which is really hard to beat. I would say that if you have experimented a bit with watercolor and you're like, yes, this is for me, this is my new favorite hobby, or I want to, you know, build on my skills with watercolor, it might be time to start saving up for one of the more expensive sets because you can create paintings with these two sets that you know will survive the test of time and in 20 years you can still enjoy that painting that you spent a ton of time on. If you are really keen on painting specific subject matter, I would go with the handmade palette because with the different options that are out there, you can get one that's like all mountain landscape colors. I have a palette that was made by a small business and it's all just custom made for people that like to paint landscapes. And I think that's really special. Another nice perk of this is that you are empowering small businesses and fellow artisans, which feels really good. Um, and then if you would like to go for more vibrant, super playful colors, I would suggest maybe getting a commercially made palette that's a little nicer like the Schmeka one. So now that you know what I think of each of these palettes, I'd love to hear what you think of them. And also, if you have any favorite brands or specific palettes that you prefer, drop them in the comments below and I'd love to hear about it. If you enjoyed learning alongside me today, I have two classes over on Skillshare and they're both nature-based watercolor classes. We cover everything from painting natural objects to painting mountainous landscapes. So I'd love to have you as a student in one of my classes. And you can find the links to both of those classes in the description below. And lastly, don't forget to like and subscribe to Skillshare's YouTube channel for more creative videos like this one.